If people around me were kind of going through the same thing, I probably would have been able to joke and have more sense of like camaraderie around it. It's just like, we're teens, we're pimply teens and that's who we are. But instead it was like, oh no, I'm the only one. Hello everyone, I'm Chantel and I'm here to talk about my acne journey today. You've probably heard me talk about having acne in different videos um, because I had acne all as a kid growing up into teenhood, into adulthood, and it still is something that is very present in my life today. Also, I need to put a major disclaimer that this in no way is telling you what you should do for your skin. I'm not telling you what to take, I'm not telling you what not to take, what to use, what not to use. I just want you to know that I'm not claiming to have had like the most severe acne that anyone has ever seen. I just had very persistent and resilient acne that refused to go away for 10 years. <laughs> I probably got my first pimple when I was around like 13, 14, and my brother also, who's two years older than me, was starting to get acne around the same time also. My mom heard that getting facials and peels would help acne, and so she started taking me and my brother to both get them regularly. And so it was the type of thing where they would help temporarily, but then like a week or so later, my skin would just kind of revert back to how it was prior. And then also, by the time I got my next period, all hell had broken loose again. It was just already back to pimple minefield on my face, which took me down the road of going to doctors and dermatologists to find a cure for my acne. Acne is not actually curable. I can't even remember all the different medications, topical, oral, that I've tried because I've tried so many. As I got older and my period started getting more regular and more strong, my hormones were definitely going in flux. And so around every month, you know, you would just see all, all the pimples just coming out to play. And it got to the point where my doctor was like, you know what, let's just put you on birth control. I had heard, okay, you'll get like boob tenderness. It'll make your boobs big. It'll make you gain weight. It'll do all these bodily effects. And when I brought them up to my doctor, she was like, oh no, that's not true. It's not gonna do that. Birth control is not proven to have any of those effects. Cut to one month later, me on birth control. My body is completely different. My face is completely erupted. And I was like, I'm done with this. I don't need to be on this. So after a couple months, I went off of it and then began the journey of oral medications alongside topical medications that were only very minorly working. I took tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, Bactrim, like so many different things. I got to the point where I felt like I was an acne expert, researching everywhere, talking to everyone about it, to the point where I would go to the dermatologist and they would just kind of give me these tips where I was like, duh, make sure that you're changing your pillowcase often. I was like, cool, I change it every single day. Make sure that you're washing your face. Yep, do that twice a day also. Use a washcloth, doing that too. Go apply with the hands, take it off with the washcloth, exfoliate, use toner, moisturize, sunscreen. I'm like, yes, I do all these things. Don't eat sugar, I don't have a sweet tooth. Don't eat red meat, I'm vegetarian. Make sure you drink a lot of water. I'm known for always drinking a bunch of water. I don't even drink soda, I don't drink energy drinks, I don't drink coffee, all I drink is water. I was doing everything right. And so it got to the point where it was just like, okay, you know, no one touches this zone. And all my friends even knew, oh yeah, if you're like hugging Chantel or something, you don't touch her face. After I went through my run of oral medications and topical medications, Accutane finally came into play. Accutane is the mother load of acne medications. It's known for being very effective, but with every pro, there's a con. And with Accutane, there's about two pros and 50 million cons. So Accutane has a way of making your skin dry. It makes your lips dry as well. There's been documentation of very serious mental health issues with it. So I start taking Accutane. And at the time that I was taking it, my doctor told me it was mandated that anyone who could get pregnant had to take birth control while taking Accutane. And I was like, I don't wanna take birth control again. I know what that does to my face. I know what that does to my body. I'm also 
very active in my youth group. Trust me, I'm not gonna have sex. I'm not gonna get pregnant. So she said, okay, you don't have to take birth control, but you do have to get a blood test every month to make sure that everything is still okay in your body. So everything was like going well with my Accutane usage, but then about halfway through is when my doctor found a fibroid adenoma that was just hanging out in my boob. And she was like, you know what? I don't think that it's um, malignant, but I just want to get it out. And so in order to have that surgery, I had to stop Accutane, be off of it for a month, and then get my surgery, be off of it for a month, and then continue Accutane back afterwards. And so I was like, Okay, you know what, I want it out too. Um, it wound up being benign, thank goodness. And then I unpaused my Accutane and went back on it again. But since I had to split it up, it just wasn't as effective as if I had done it straight through. And so I still had acne. So I went to college and then started back up on a different antibiotic that I had actually taken before, but it didn't work before. So my doctor said, you know what? Try this again. Now that your acne is kind of dialed back, I think it'll work. So I ended up taking Bactrim again and it worked. So that was amazing. So then I took that for a little bit until my skin just started being able to regulate itself. So I weaned myself off of it and my skin was doing well. Cut to a year ago, my face starts erupting again. My dermatologist told me that because I was getting pimples and zits just all around my hairline and jawline, it was hormonal acne. And I was like, how is it my hormones again? Why are they back to haunt me? I thought I was done with this. So I started taking spironolactone and thank God it actually works. I don't know if this just wasn't invented during the time that I was going through my teenage pubescent acne phase, or if my doctor just didn't know about it, but at least it's helping now. And that brings us to today. I have a recently popped pimple right here. So that's a fun little scar, but my face is definitely on the up and up, which I am so thankful for. Growing up, I was always into media. I was into video, into photos. Anytime we got our hands on a camera, me and my friends were making media, making content. We would take these photos out, ingest them all into my computer, and then that's when I would really just kind of like see what my face looked like. And so I started learning how to retouch my face and I got really, really good at it. I don't even really have photos from the time of me having this like really, really bad acne because we didn't have digital cameras until I was already like later in high school. And the photos that I do have are all retouched by me. And so it is like kind of sad that I felt embarrassed enough to basically change my face and throw away the key. And I just have no record of it. I also want to preface this. This was us like doing a photo shoot, but we knew that it was silly. Like, trust me, like we were, we were being ironic about it. So here's this one, me standing with tree. If you look like close enough, you can see just like the bumps around my forehead, the stuff around my chin and my cheeks. Also, this was nine years ago and I look kind of the same. <laughs> this one, it's like, if you kind of get around my hairline, it's like, oh, there's one or two. But again, it's just like, this is what it was. This is what I wanted people to see. This is like one of the only ones that I found where you could see even just tiny actual remnants, but it was taken with my like photo booth camera at the time, which just wasn't very good quality. And so I think probably the reason why I didn't retouch this one, or at least not as much, was because it was so pixelated anyways. And then I also learned, it's like, oh, if you get closer, it'll wash out your face which also makes it look blemish free. So that was my trick. This is what I call the MySpace look. It's so MySpace, right? Hello, it me, MySpace me. I think the most major retouching that I did was on this photo. 
I think this photo wound up like in my yearbook or something like that. They needed a photo of me and I was like, take this one because my skin looks like this. So I want to reiterate, this is just my journey with acne. This is not indicative of everyone's journey with acne or anyone besides myself. I know that there are many, many worse things that I could have gone through in my childhood. I just wanted to be open with you all about it and let me know if this is something that you have ever gone through and how it makes you feel. Because I know that it was definitely kind of like a roller coaster of emotions for me. I know it's hard because it's right on your face, but it'll be okay. Trust me, anyone that cares about you is not gonna care about your acne. You deserve to feel beautiful in your skin, in your face, and no one is allowed to take that away from you.